Some people will come when they hear the word of the Lord, they are in rejoicing, they are fulfilled, they are so happy, they become so excited. Hallelujah! Jeremiah 2 5. Yes, sir. They shout, they yell, they jump, they sing, and shake the ground beneath them in Jesus' mighty name. And the moment persecution comes, and the moment <laughs> did you like that one? <laughs> I think I'm gonna go to America <laughs> and be one of those prosperity preachers. Jesus said to me, get a plane worth $85 million. No ground at all. No ground at all. So when persecution comes for the sake of the word of the Lord, and that persecution comes and then scratches my self, scratches my name, my dignity, my authority, my rank, my position. The moment it scratches me, all hell breaks loose. No more Jesus. What happened? You were rejoicing when you heard the word first. He said, yes, as long as the word is tailored to my own way, I'll accept the Lord. But the moment I get kicked, punched, ridiculed, and deposed and thrown out, no more. I will never let nobody touches my dignity. Not even for the Lord's sake. Wow. See, me is extremely powerful. Very powerful. You want to test a person if they come to church for the Lord or for themselves? Take away the position from them. <laughs> Imagine someone like John the Baptist. What is so unique? What is so special about John the Baptist is one thing. He is of the Old Testament, yet the only one saw the Lamb of God, the real Lamb of God, not the symbol of the Lamb of God. Not symbolically, but he saw the true Lamb of God. So he is the only one of the Old Testament that witnessed the New Testament physically, literally. He was an eyewitness to the New Testament. But he was never baptized the way the Lord gave it to the disciples, even though he was in his mother's womb. He never received the body and the blood like we do. He never. Yet, so unique about John the Baptist. In his peak of fame and Jesus Christ is about to come into the scenes nobody knows him nobody really cares that much but yet John the Baptist everybody held him so highly when they came and said to him the one whom you spoke about is trying to take your place He's taking your followers away from you. He is snatching them away from you. Be careful, John. This Jesus of Nazareth is after your position. He's trying to be the famous one and push you away from the center of attention. John the Baptist said, well, it is only natural for him to do so because he is the groom and I am the groom's best man. The wedding is not about me. The wedding is about the groom. He is the groom. And I rejoice as the best man when I hear the voice of the groom. Wow. You need to follow him, not me. Amazing in absolute self-denial. So famous so revered by the Israelite nation, 
so popular the man of God the prophet of God Jesus of Nazareth we don't even know his background where he comes from who he is who the parents are we don't know but John the Baptist yes of course everybody bows before John the Baptist but John the Baptist bowed before Jesus Christ of Nazareth and said I am not even worthy to undo the shoelace of Jesus Christ of Nazareth He denied the word me. He denied the word me to gain Christ. So when they tried to say that Jesus is after your position, he was glad. Jesus is after your throne, he was happy. When it is me, I will not accept not one word even from God himself. When me is so powerfully living in me, I won't even listen to God. I will be disobedient. The weak will leads me to me the rock, the stubborn, not the good rock, no, the bad rock that is stubborn, that, is, that says it is either my way or you hit the highway. Stubbornness will lead me to only one place, self-destruction. Stubbornness will only lead me to one place, 100%, self-destruction. A stubborn person that says it is either my way or nothing else will be left alone. They will destroy themselves. But there is a problem. The reason why the Lord warns us not to chase after me, 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 me. You know why? Because the third struggle is the thorns, people in your life. There are two kinds of thorns. One thorn is called a mountain and one thorn is called a valley. What is a valley? The mountain turned upside down. The mountain turned upside down. That's a valley. One thorn is a mountain. What is mountain? Pride, self-exaltation. Look at me. So that what girls do after they come out of the hairdressing salon? Oh, it's so soft. I like it. Well, I've got a longer hair. But I, just one thing. The hair is black, but the beard is white. <laughs> See, I'm still old fashioned, black and white. <laughs> I don't like the color TV, I like the black and white. <sighs> the mountain pride. What is valley? Hopelessness, losing hope. So when I chase after myself, I'll be so self-centered on what people think of me. Everything to me is how people perceive me. So when someone comes along and says a nice word about me, I become a mountain, a big balloon, I'll fly high. Satan will devour me because what made the angel fall was pride. Pride, false pride. Big deal, someone said to me, you're a saint. I didn't become a saint. It was the saintliness that was in their heart that spoke. You're a saint. Hmm, whatever. And then someone comes along and says, you're a sinner. It was that sin that spoke in your heart.
But the problem, you see, when I am so preoccupied with myself, then any and every word is scaled, is put in the scale and measured so accurately and deeply. So somebody says a nice word, I become a mountain pride, Satan devours me. And somebody says a nasty word, I become a valley, lose hope and cry for myself. Why did they say that? Oh, I am bad, I'm this, I'm that, I start crying and I'm no good. I won't leave the room anymore because they said this about me. Even the donkey thought people were praising him on Palm Sunday. And he was told off by another donkey. Listen, mate, the praising wasn't for you. Remember who sat on your back? His name is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. The praising was for him, not for you. So whether you are a pope, you're a cardinal, you're a bishop, the praising is not for you. Who do you think you are? The only thing is you are carrying Christ on your back and the Lord gave you the ultimate blessing to allow you to carry him and bring him to the world that is living in sin, in darkness, in ugliness, and in the poison of the old snake called Satan. So when people praise you, it's not you. It is the Christ that is in you. And when people tell you off as a leader, they have said it to your master before you. So why are you offended? You are not the reason. It is Jesus of Nazareth. He is the reason. People will love you for him, for his sake. And people will hate you also for his sake. Have you forgotten? Christ is Good Friday and Sunday resurrection. Do you want to just be glorified and forget about the suffering of Christ? Christ. 